about this map, of course, and um, today we're doing a video because so many people have asked it, it's time to get it over and done with. These are bikes, the question is, why? Why aren't there diesel bikes? Now, there's going to be people who are going to talk about small little diesel engines, generators and stuff that they've been putting bikes. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about why manufacturers, if, you know, economy for some bikes and all the rest of it, and this, that and the other, why haven't they done diesel bikes? Um, the reason why they don't, haven't done diesel bikes is a few reasons. But let's just quickly, quickly, briefly talk about diesel as a fuel. Diesel is not as volatile when we do the, um, if, you, if I've already done the um, fractional distillation video, uh, petrol is up here, and diesel is down here, it's one lower, I'll say one, it's quite a few lower, because there's the different variants of hydrocarbons between there. But diesel is more like an oil, um, which means that some of its properties are different, i.e. it's not as volatile, which means it doesn't readily, as it, it's, its combustion rate is not as rapid as petrol is, you know, and we need combustion speeds to be fast if we want to go faster, you know what I mean? Something that is slow burning would make a slow engine, something that is fast burning would make a fast engine, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you know, because you can't be the, the limiting factor of your engine can't be the fact that your fuel just won't burn quick enough. Because if you fill a cylinder, if you fill a cylinder with one litre, um, uh, with one litre of fuel and air, you want all of that to burn to extract as much energy. This is efficiency. This is fuel efficiency. Um, if we use just say at a certain speed, so just oh fucking hell. Just say it's at 10,000 RPM, just for instance, just say, right, a fast speed. If we do this and with petrol we get 100%, as in all of it burns theoretically, but then, you know, diesel burns 75%, for example, you know, that, that isn't good. You know what I mean? Because then we're just wasting fuel. So then any gains that you get, you obviously because it's two things it's fuel efficiency because you're losing 75 at 25 percent of fuel which goes out in the air kills a lot of gypsies and pandas and what have you and the other problem is is that um if you're only burning 75 percent of fuel then you're only getting 75 percent of your power these aren't actual numbers these are just me blatantly making it obvious to you so um that's one reason the other reason is is people say wait a lot well not really because wait um, you can use exotic materials. What you should be saying instead of weight is cost. You can make ultra light diesels. Um, you know, you just have really thick aluminium, <laughs> and you use um, steel on steel inserts. You know, um, not I'm not talking helicoils, coils. I'm talking actual inserts, embedded inserts. Um, you can use all that kind of shit, and you can make diesels quite compact, quite small great the problem is is cost so you have two bikes uh, you have two bikes you have two bikes and one is gas petrol one is gas petrol and one is diesel right then so you get better fuel so your fuel economy, uh, fuel efficiency is better, sorry should I say, fuel economy, fuel efficiency, that's better. And what the fucking hell is that? No one can read that, you prick. <laughs> uh, fuel. fuel your, your fuel efficiency is better. Um, and this is great, but... Your speed is better for your two-stroke. You can accelerate quicker because it's basically a little more volatile fuel. Um, your top speed is higher. Um, you have to use less uh, exotic materials, so it costs less. I'm doing this all weird. Uh, it costs less. And emissions. 
Especially recently, seeing as though Diesel's just got a fucking massive kick in. But, this is before this, let's just say before this, this is why I put this over on this side. However, you've still got an engine that um, produces higher speeds and all the rest of it. And if you look at, like, say, like an R1 or a GSXR, over the years, them engines have been going more over square, over square, over square, over square, i.e. they stroke as getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Why is this? Well, it's because we can, we, you know, our um, thermal efficiency in these engines is getting better, which means that we can produce more torque, which means torque isn't our problem anymore, it's speed. You know, we want to go faster and faster so we have better numbers every year, so when you wank mad, you can, you know, impress the local power engine knobheads who want to go out and get this year's R1. Um, but you can give them better numbers, and um, all you have to do really is just decrease your stroke. So you have less of a circle to go around, so you can accelerate faster, so you can go faster. So it's more about RPMs. The RPM ceiling has been going up and up and up, especially with the invention of um, or the better understanding of spring harmonics, so you don't get float as much as you used to, and so on and so on. We can go higher and higher and higher and higher. This is what I mean, it's a rabbit hole. There's a lot of reasons why we're doing this, and some people say, um, yes, but recently the top speeds and the numbers haven't been going up. Well, accelerations have. Top speeds don't matter. You know, so your bike does 186. They're all, and the manufacturers have done this on purpose. They know that what feels faster, because that's what it comes down to, it comes down to test rides, that's what sells bikes. So if you have a 2000, let's just say you have a 2014 R1, you know what I mean, and you go to the, what the fuck is on that? And you go to the dealership and you want a um, 2000, you know, a brand new 2018 R1. What do you want from it? Well, you want it to feel better. So you ride it and it feels faster you're still, you're still going, what the, f oh, fucking hell, I thought it something there. Um, you know, you feel faster because it accelerates faster, not because you're going 186 and then it's fucking cutting, on, cutting out on you. They have clipped and restricted these maximum speed limits, so trying to get us off the psyche of top speed is everything, because it's not. You know what I mean? Yamaha, Kawasaki got a big hammering back in the 90s because they were saying about the ZX-12 and all the rest of it. All that evidence, like, it's the fastest bike we've ever built. Then they got a big hammering for that, saying, from governments and stuff, saying, whoa, whoa, you shouldn't be telling people it's the fastest bike you've ever made. That's not what this is all about. You know what I mean? Because they were talking about top speed and all the rest of it. Um, any road. So, yeah, the reason why you don't make diesels, bikes don't really need the crazy fuel efficiency because they are light. Um, the cost of making lightweight diesel engines is doable, it's just too high versus petrol. At the end of the day, when you go to a petrol pump, there is petrol and diesel. Why would you want to have a bike that has diesel? What are the benefits? Well, it has better fuel economy. Okay, what else? Oh, well, it's going to cost you more, and it's going to be slower, and... It's going to make an horrible noise, and recently it's failing, you know, you're going to fail emissions and all the rest of it. Or, if there were diesels, bikes would probably now have emissions, testing at just say MOT and stuff like that. Hope that... Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.